Salut On a enfin récupéré Cédric, mais le sommeil c'est pas encore réglé, donc je dors encore un peu, mais on va faire avec. Donc j'ai Jack encore une fois son interview. Ça va aller, c'est pas réveillé. Je veux pas parler trop fort non plus à cause de ça. Euh, on est avec le Sean Thomas, qui est un... J'ai regardé sur Wikipédia la liste de ses professions. Elle est juste incroyablement longue. So you have many jobs, like Wikipedia says you are a producer, a director, a writer, an artist, an animator, a character designer, a penciler, and even more if we look at everything. What would you say is your job? I don't know, that's, a, that's an interesting question. I, I would just, you know, call myself a creator. I, I started off uh, wanting to be a comic book penciler, and um, I managed to segue into animation production, which of course, as you listed, is very compartmentalized. It is filmmaking. So yeah. there are several positions in filmmaking, uh, unlike comic books, which is mainly just illustration. Um, so um, throughout various points of my career, I, you know, I played with different opportunities um, to, to, to be in those positions, you know, uh, from the director to the character designer to storyboard artists, and most recently uh, producing and, and even a little bit of writing. So. How did all that start? Being a fan of, of illustration, being a fan of comic books, um, and being a fan of, of, of just drawing in general. And as I got older, I wanted to pursue my career being the next comic book superstar. I wanted to be Jim Lee and Rob Liefeld and um, all of those cats. And, um, you know, that didn't pan out for me. Um, I wound up uh, working at a children's accessories company for uh, licenses with Disney and Uh, Warner Brothers and Cartoon Network, and I used to do a lot of assistant designs for like model backpacks and um, model molded umbrella handles and backpacks and stuff like that that had Disney characters on the merchandise. So we had series Bibles that taught us how to learn these characters, um, and I think that's how my style started to cross over into a more simplified line work of uh, reminiscent to animation, uh, final picture quality, and less. Uh, environmental design techniques of illustration like cross hatching and shadows and rendering and stuff and by doing that job not only did my style simplify towards animation but I also met several different art directors who were married to people who had connections to people in the animation industry that saw my style as something that may work in pre-production which is character design and you know, so on and so forth so that's how they would just segue into animation And once I got into the animation world, then a lot of these opportunities started to open up, which led me to go to studios in Hollywood and California, which forced me to move over there to find more work in that industry. Um, and then ultimately learning that a lot of our production is outsourced overseas, um, one of which uh, South Korea, which also led me to wanting to perhaps move over there and work in, you know, in the part where the work is outsourced, which is animation production. So. Um, You know, jumping from comics to illustration um, to animation design, which led me to opportunities in pre-production, which led me to wanting to do more because there's not much in New York. I moved to California and then eventually got more curious and moved to Korea. So um, there's, there's sort of a, a, a common thread in, in it all that I'm just kind of <laughs> curious, you um, know. How is the daily life of, of somebody like you, for example? Is it like an, an, anonymous, an anonymous job or do people recognize you in the streets? You mean in terms of like comparing of being someone famous like a comic book artist versus being yeah. someone working behind the scenes? Well, it really depends, you know. There's this popular assumption amongst illustrators that being in animation automatically means that you work as an anonymous unknown. And that's just not the truth. You know, the truth is, is that animation is produced by committee or it is produced independently by one person. You see it online, you see it everywhere. People are doing all the animations themselves. Granted, they're not huge, you know, productions, but you know, you can do animation as an individual and shine as an individual, auteur as the French would like to use the term, you know, <laughs> um, or you can um, play a role in a bigger production, usually, you know, mainstream industry standard productions, much not unlike mainstream comic book productions. And it's very rare that there is an artist who does everything at Marvel. Yeah. You know, they're not editing, they're not doing lettering, they're not mm -hmm. doing word balloons, they're not coloring, they're not inking, they're not penciling, they're not writing, they're not doing it all and pumping yeah. it out on a monthly basis. So much so, like the director of an animated project, the directors of a comic book, i.e. the penciler, will get the big yeah. name, you know. So 
So I just wanted to clarify that before yeah, I, you know, yeah. I answered your question. Cool. Um, as far as the daily life for me, you can kind of treat it pretty much like a regular nine to five job. If you have your work system set up, you know, you can come in, do your storyboards for the day, and then go home. You know, okay. as part storyboards being one part of, of, of production. Um, it's the same thing with editing. It's the same thing with character design. You know, it's pretty basic. You know, some people work from home. That's a different kind of experience, of course, because it involves timely naps and. You know, <laughs> yeah. playing video games and taking breaks yeah. and that kind and of thing. Well, but managing yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but but for the most part, it's the the, the, the work life of, of an artist working in a in in, in an organized you know uh, industry production, be it a TV series or an animated feature, is not unlike a nine to five. Believe it or not, it's just a lot more fun. Like, I have this image in my head that I want you to clarify and maybe bro break. No mm -hmm. problem. Um, what does it look like when you, when the crew brought back for, for Black Dynamite is starting to work on a new episode? Do you have like this huge pile of coke in the middle <laughs> of the table? Just play with it, throw it in the air. Uh, you know, ironically, um, uh, uh, one would think that you need to be, a, you know, uh, some substance abuse to be able to <laughs> pull off some of the, the wackiness in, in the show, but. Believe it or not, the showrunners are vegetarians or vegan, you know, so maybe it's the vegan power. <laughs> from, you know, what is that? Is, isn't that in, in, uh, in uh, Scott Pilgrim? Scott Pilgrim right it's right a vegan power. Maybe it's vegan yeah. power comedy. They were able to pull that off. But t t seriously, a lot of, there's some several Boondock screenplay alumni that are a part of the Black Dynamite writing crew, including Carl Jones, obviously, being a co executive producer of the Boondock. So there is a, a running uh, theme of, of shenanigans you know that, that <laughs> yeah. injects itself and pretty much in my point of view not speaking for anyone else Black Dynamite also sort of services as the boondocks but in the 60s and the 70s that core that those writers you know the comedy writers that are from that they they're so used to writing that material from the boondocks that it just kind of crossed over and it's yeah. like well what if we did this this way and you know what if we brought Elvis Presley back what would, <laughs> how, would, how would the black community respond to him in the 70s and so on and so forth so you know um, Working with those writers. Good morning. Hey, sorry. Right. <laughs> I was sitting. Yeah, yeah. Um, sorry, sorry. We want to finish. Uh, I'm going to finish. Uh, um, you, you ask your question. Ah, uh, your question. Yeah. 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 Okay. Let, let's go um, back to your projects. Okay. Because you have Cannon Busters coming up, mm -hmm. the animated series. Um, well, for those of us who don't know. Can you tell us what is Cannon Busters? Cannon Busters is an action adventure fantasy dramedy uh, comic book idea that I created back in 2005. And it was a series that I was uh, planning on doing on my own um, after we finished issue zero um, with another artist named Corey Lewis from, um, from Washington. The story is about a lost uh, robot who is trying to unlock her past in order to save her world's future. It centers around a character named Sam, who is a friendship robot. She's designed to be the best friend of and sort of caretaker of the heir of this very affluent kingdom that specializes in making robots. Um, and it's during a time period where magic is extinct. You know, uh, mankind or the people on this planet are highly reliant upon technology. And um, a sorcerer just out of nowhere shows up and causes complete havoc on this kingdom, destroys everyone abducts the king, the prince is on the run, he's in hiding, he's trying to get to a neighboring uh, holding, a royal holding facility called Gyrus Keep, where, you know, royalty that's under siege, you know, goes to regroup, and it's very, very far away. Um, Sam is separated from the prince, and she's on her own for the first time, and all she knows is that she needs to find the prince at Gyrus Keep. So, she decides to go on this journey on her own to figure out where this place is, but of course, it's difficult, so she meets two individuals who agree to help her get to Goddess Keep. One is a, a friendship outdated uh, maintenance robot, um, and another is a wanted criminal who's on the run from several bounty hunters. And he kind of reluctantly agrees to help her get to this place because uh, he's been a prisoner there and he knows the ins and outs. And What's the last comic book you've read? Mm. The last comic book I read? Yeah. Believe it or not, the last comic book I read was all new Captain America. Um, the guy who played <laughs> it, it's a Marvel comic book. Uh, there's a there's a there's a character who used to be the Falcon. 
Um, and there's a, there's a continuity storyline where Captain America is gone, he's dead, yeah. and the Falcon becomes a new Captain America. And he's, you know, the Falcon's a black character. And there's been a lot of hype around the fact that Captain America is now black, so to speak. Yeah. And I was just curious about the hype. I'm not a big mainstream superhero comic book reader, but you know, the first six issues I picked up just to see what the hype was about. Mm -hmm. And I read it and I was like, oh, this is, this is okay. You know, it's not that bad. <laughs> but I'm a big fan of the, of, 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 of the, of the comic book illustrator who does that as well. So, um, but believe it or not, it's the last like comic book that I read. And this was maybe, I want to say maybe four, four months ago. So, yeah. yeah. But I haven't been like keeping up with comic books <laughs> in a well, sense, you know. Yeah. But I did just get the newest manga. I can't read this in French, but it's by uh, Tony Valente. It's a manga called Radiant. Okay. Um, yeah. And it just two days ago was announced on Anime News Network that it became the French first French manga in Japan. Nice. Yeah, he's here. He's oh, wow. a super talented guy, Tony Valente. You should look him up. The comic yeah. book is called Radiant. And I wish it was in English because it looks. <laughs> I would read it because it looks spectacular. You won't translate it. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah, I could. Just, <laughs> just, it together. just for you. Yeah, say, touch me. <laughs> um, and the last one, and that's an easy one. Mm. Are you happy? No, I'm not happy. <laughs> um, there's a difference between happy for me and content. Content means it's okay for now. But happy, yeah. you know, uh, you know, I'm not happy yet. Happy, I haven't accomplished the things that I want to accomplish. Like for now, like for example, I'm 39. I've been working in professional TV animation for, I want to say, 10 years. Just to be fair, you know, I count 2004 me coming to Hollywood as like that's like my tenure. And I'm just now doing my own thing, you know. So for me, I want to to do more of that, you know. I want to do more than a 10 minute pilot. I want to do my own series. I want to direct my own series. I want to be an auteur, so to speak. I want to have my own <laughs> personal touch on things. Because I'm very good at making other people money. I know how to help other people's shows along, but it would be great to be separated and be known for the things that I do, you know? So that would make me happy. Well, and getting getting paid to consistently. <laughs> yeah. Well, December? December is a projected date. Um, yeah. That's when we would like to be done. Um, that's what we're pushing to be done, but of course, with With filmmaking, it's you never know. It's, it's you know, <laughs> a week or two, maybe a month late. Who knows? I'm not saying anything. Right. But, but so far, it's looking good. We're on track. We're in the middle of um, we're wrapping up. We're in the middle of pre-production. We're going to be starting layout. Um, cool. Well, thanks for meeting us. Thank you for having um, me. I'm, I'm talking about you. I'm humble to be here. And we'll wait. Yeah, yeah. And as much too. as needed yeah, for Canon Buster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it'll be good. With your definition. I really wish you to be happy. Thank you very much. Yeah, Thank you very much. your definition is great. Yeah. I'm content right now. <laughs> What I'm breathing, I'm alive, I've got all my working parts, you know, it all is it's moving, but to, to be happy would be to you know, get think, paid doing what I like. I think you worked hard, I think you deserved it. And, uh, you know what, I'm, I've been really careful with that deserved word, yo. Like, I've been <laughs> really careful with the word deserved. Like, Like I used to just drop it all the time, but now like I've, I've been around long enough. Like it's like I like the word earn. I want to earn. Yeah. Okay. Because deserve feels like like it's almost like you you deserve that. Like that's like. But if people throw the word deserve around and they haven't really earned it. You know what I mean? So I feel kind of like so I'm weird. I'm like, deserve and self taught has been these weird words that I'm trying to transform this year. <laughs> like I, I want to earn something and I'm not self taught. I'm, I'm self disciplined. So mm -hmm. the, the best compliments probably to wish you to earn the happiness. Yeah, yeah, I hope you earn that someday. <laughs> yes, me too. I, I hope to earn that. You know. Please, I wish yeah. that for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I appreciate Again, it. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Have a good one. Good good sorry one. for sleeping. It's all good. <laughs> It's all good. Sometimes you got a nap, you know, it doesn't matter. <laughs>